cameras work fine, Captain. Okay, we'll head for home. The final run was made at 750 feet. I couldn't see what we needed in the oblique, so I made this forward firing cast. Should be about 10 or 15 frames down on the first run. There it is. Okay, we'll need prints of these three and the rest of the run. Gentlemen, Plan Alpha calls for a landing on Blue Beach. However, our photo interpreters have ascertained from our aerial reconnaissance Blue Beach to be heavily fortified. Therefore, we recommend Plan Bravo the landing on Red Beach. Mission. Amphibious operations. The target, a distant stretch of sandy beach, is brought close by reconnaissance. Months of planning have paid off. Now the final decisions must be made. Lieutenant, get a message out to the amphibious task force commander. Yes, sir. Advise him that we recommend using Plan Bravo with a landing on Red Beach. We also recommend HR at 0500. <laughs> sea, a Marine Battalion landing team is poised for the assault. Men, weapons, and Navy support. All together they form a powerful striking weapon. They've been training together for seven months. Now it's going to happen, and they're ready. Okay, Weaver, I want to pack straight away. I want all your other gear squared away by the day. Yes, sir. At light of dawn, the landing force moves ashore. Everybody traveling just a little faster under fire. Wave after wave hits the beach on a precise schedule. Within 30 minutes, 1,200 Marines will be ashore. With the men comes mechanized support the fast-moving Antos tank killer searching out its targets. Right left. Stop. Now I'll try to watch. It's a direct hit. You're out of action for a half hour. Put up the black flag. Yes, sir. War games? A rehearsal? That's right. Just going through the motions? Yeah. No, that's not right. Mitch, take your team, move out to the left, and bell from the left. Go! Month after month, the men of the Fleet Marine Force carry out these exercises. And they take it seriously. All of it. Each time, the beach is a proving ground for tactics, for machines, for men. Each time, they gain experience, better their performance. You don't wait for combat to take your training seriously. Here's an actual incident during an amphibious exercise. An enemy strongpoint is holding up a marine rifle company. An umpire points out the target. The company commander calls in a forward air controller. He's a marine aviator assigned to the infantry to guide air strikes against the enemy. Coordinates 96-2, 96-1. 
36-1. Assisting the controller is a marine communicator, a radio specialist, and a jeep full of equipment. Ready to minute, sir. Within minutes, he's set up and ready to go. Hello, Binder. This is Bird Dog 1-4. I have one priority mission. Over. The request is cleared swiftly through the echelons of command. Close air support is a Marine Corps specialty. Fortified position in target area. Niner 6 3 3 1 8. Chart number 1. Request bombing, rocket, and napalm attack. Aircraft already on patrol are directed to the area. Bird Dog 1 4, Bird Dog 1 4. This is Highball 3 3. Over. Guiding a flight of supersonic attack aircraft down to a small target on the ground isn't easy. It's done by one pilot talking to another in the special language of flight. Six pads, one eight, and six Mark 81s per aircraft. Over. Have all three three. This is Bird Dog one four. I have you in sight. You're cleared on target. Heading three five zero degrees. Pull out left. The wind at the target is from the east at twelve knots. I suggest a running heading. On to the Bird Dog 1 4, this is Highball 3 3. Your transmission's broken. Say again, please. Over. It happens every so often, usually at the wrong time. Hello, Bird Dog 1 4, Highball 3 3. Over. He's cutting in and out. You get him? You give it a try. Without guidance, the strike aircraft can't complete the mission. At the moment, everything depends on one Marine's communications know-how. His response is almost instinctive as he checks the connections, the terminals, the fuses, seeking to isolate the problem. This is Bird Dog 1-4. How do you read me now, over? Uh, Roger, Bird Dog 1-4. This is Highball 3-3. We're reading you loud and clear, over. Roger, Highball 3-3. This is Bird Dog 1-4. I say again, I suggest your bomb heading from north to south, over. Uh, Roger, Bird Dog 1-4. This is Highball 3-3. We have the target in sight. We're rolling in hot right now. training that pulled him through. Less than a year out of high school, this Marine knew where to look and what to do because he was trained in what the Marine Corps calls immediate action. The training he received in communications built one step upon another from first principles of radio on through increasingly complex theory and practice. All of it has been pointed toward rapid response to cope with the emergency as soon as it happened. Part of his training covered the MRC-87 used in ground air communication. Methodical, systematic instruction that stuck with him when he needed it. ...through this receiver transmitter. If any of the students are still in doubt as to the position of these units, please come forward. Sergeant, where's the receiver transmitter unit located? Right here, Stevenson. However, the most complex piece of equipment that will give you the most trouble in the field is the antenna coupler. But even small problems will give you more trouble in the field, such as wires, cables, small joints. Marine training made him a competent technician. His initiative and alertness did the rest. Thousands of Marine specialists participate in every exercise. Their professional touch is as necessary here as it is in combat. The helicopter crew chief. Okay, real good. Give me a thumbs up when it's completed. All right. The combat engineer. 
the aerologist, probing for tomorrow's weather. The highly trained reconnaissance troops, repelling in behind enemy lines. Far afield, the work of hundreds of other Marines supports the operation. Each of the 30,000 Marines sent to formal training courses each year becomes expert in his field. The Marine Corps builds men, men who are highly skilled, who seek to excel in their assignment, whether it's programming a computer, or maintaining the fuel system of a jet fighter. Where do they derive this standard of excellence? It's something, Marines will tell you, you know from the beginning, from the first day you put on the uniform. The Marine Corps wants your best effort. No matter how specialized his assignment, every Marine is a rifleman, first, last, and always. You didn't know what you were doing. The training is rugged, unforgiving. It may mean changing the habits of a lifetime, but these standards will set the pace for every other experience you'll have in the Corps. Men, combat is a serious business. If you go into combat and don't know what you're doing, you are going to be in serious trouble. Is that clear? All right, sound off, Marine. Hands up. Safety off. Remember, you aim in at the tank downrange at 300 yards. You squeeze the trigger, you do not jerk it. You'll always be confronted with a challenge of high performance. Machines do their part, but victory still hinges on the courage and stamina of the individual, the rifleman, himself an expert in the art of winning and surviving in the very serious business of combat. The constant training and practice gives him that extra margin, the confidence, the alertness, the mark of the professional. And this is how the Marine Corps has always trained the young Americans who have joined its ranks. For more than 190 years, whenever Marines have gone into battle for their country, training, thorough and realistic, has prepared them to face any problem, any challenge, anywhere. Today's Marines are experts in the complexities of modern warfare. And they are the same self-reliant men who have answered this nation's call since 1775. The Marine Corps is offering you a challenge to join the ranks of these Marines, to undergo the training and building of body, mind, and spirit, the mark of a Marine. <laughs>